Christians are just misunderstanding what is written in the Bible. Bible is just giving the Islamic perspective that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And Christians, they say that he was dead. Is Jesus telling the truth? Or they are telling the truth? They recognized and their eyes were opened. What do you mean by eyes were opened? Their eyes were shut or what? No, no, no. They recognized the man that this is Jesus. The, you know, the way he tear the bread and he had it. So they recognized. And Jesus vanished from there. He went from there. And now they, these disciples, these two disciples, they are telling disciples in the upper room that we saw Jesus alive. We saw Jesus alive. And they say, we believe not. I say, why they are not believing? These disciples. You know why? Because they had heard from hearsay that master was crucified on the cross. They had heard from hearsay that he gave up the ghost on the cross. All their knowledge was from hearsay. If Mary Magdalene would have told that I saw the spook of Jesus or a ghost of Jesus, they would have believed. So they had heard from hearsay. Because Mark chapter 14, verse number 50 says that at that critical juncture, when Jesus was being crucified, at that point, all his disciples, they forsook him and fled. All, all his disciples, they were not eyewitness, they were not air witness. They were not there. All his disciples, they forsook him and fled. So they had heard from hearsay that master was crucified on the cross. So they were not able to believe. And when you expect a person to die, you know, if a person has already died three days back, you expect a person to be stinking in the grave. And a man with such a reputation, if somebody says he's alive, so how can you believe? So that was the case. Now all the disciples were there in the upper room except Thomas. He was not there. So in came Jesus, according to Luke chapter 24, verse number 36 to 42. And Jesus came and he stood in the midst of the disciples. And he says, Shalom, Salam, peace be unto you. And the disciples, they were affrighted. They were afraid. And they thought and they supposed that they had seen a spirit. I said, why did they suppose they had seen a spirit? Did Jesus look like a spirit? I'm asking, did he look like a spirit? No. So why did they suppose when he didn't look like one? As I told you, because they had heard from hearsay that Master had died. And a man with such a reputation, if he stands in the midst of you, you will think that this person is a spirit, is not alive. So that's what they thought, that this person is a spirit. So Jesus said, behold my hands and my feet. It is I myself, for a spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. Jesus Christ showed his hands and his feet. He said, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, the same Jesus. Why are you afraid of? Handle me and see. For a spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. And they wondered, they were overjoyed, and they could not believe. So Jesus said, come on, have you had anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb. And he ate in front of them to prove what? That he is resurrected? Do resurrected bodies eat, you know, honeycomb and broiled fish? Do they? Jesus said the spirit has no flesh and bones, and the Christians said no spirit has flesh and bones. I said, who? Who are we supposed to believe? Jesus Christ, peace be on him, all the Christians. Jesus said the spirit has no flesh and bones. Resurrected bodies are spiritualized, and this person is not spiritualized at that time. The Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 42 to 45, it says, so is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. This is what the Bible says, that it is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. So Jesus said, I am not a spirit, I am not a ghost, I am not a spook, handle me and see. It is I myself. For a spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. 
and he ate in front of them royal fish and honeycomb. Jesus Christ is the one who is telling them in the most sublime form that my disciples, it is I myself, it is Jesus Christ is the one in front of you standing alive. I am not resurrected. Resurrected bodies are spiritualized. I am not a spirit. And it's proving to them that I am not dead yet. Because he has escaped the death. And he was disguised. He was here and there. He was going. And if he was resurrected, if he was spiritualized, why was the stone removed from the sepulchre? He would have come out very well without removing the stone. Why were the winding sheets were unwound? Because he was not resurrected, but he was alive. Now, you know, Jesus Christ, please be upon him. This is the, you know, you can say master key to prove that crucifixion did not happen. Master key. It is called as the sign of Jonah. Master key to prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. When Jesus was there, you know, Jews were coming up with poses and questions, riddle, riddles. And they were posing him so much riddles so that, you know, they can corner this man. So according to Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 38 to 40, the Jews came and they say, Master means Rabbi, Sheikh, we would like to have a sign from thee. We would like to have a miracle from you. And they were sarcastic. Wallah, they were sarcastic. They didn't mean that. They just wanted to call me this man. And they say, I said, Master, Rabbi, we would like to have a sign from thee. A miracle. Show us a miracle. Show us something that we can't do. And we may believe that you are somebody that we can hearken to. That we may believe that you are a true messenger of God. That we may believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah that we were waiting for. So Jesus Christ, he reacted strongly. He reacted strongly. He said, an evil and adulterous generation, seek it after a sign. You evil and adulterous generation, you are seeking after a miracle. No sign will be given unto it except the sign of Prophet Jonah. You know, they were asking him for a miracle. And he said, no, I am prepared to give you no miracle except the miracle of Prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. They were asking to show us the miracle. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, how many miracles did he perform in his life? How many? He gave life back to the dead by God's permission. He healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. How many miracles did he perform? In the Quran itself it is mentioned so many miracles Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, performed. But he said the only miracle that I am prepared to give is the miracle of prophet Jonah, peace be upon him. And further he says, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now what is the miracle of Jonah? What is the sign of Jonah? You know, everybody knows about Jonah. The Muslim knows it, the Christian knows it, the Jew knows it. Everybody knows about the sign of Jonah, about the story of Jonah. And in this Bible, there's a book of Jonah. It has got 66 books inside. As we have got 114 chapters, surahs, this Bible has got 66 books inside. And one of the books is called as the book of Jonah. It is a single leaf, you know, single page. It's hard to find. But you can go browse the index and you can find it. Everybody knows about the Jonah in the whale. You know, Jonah, Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, God sent him to Nineveh to warn the Ninevites that they must humble themselves before the Lord and they must repent in sackcloth and ashes. So, Jonah, peace be upon him, he was despondent. You know, these superstitions, credulous people, they won't listen to me. So, instead of going to Nineveh, he went to Joppa. And he's on a way, on the ship, and away to Tarshish. So, in the sea, on the ship, there was a storm, a tempest. And according to the superstition of the people, they believe that anyone who runs away from the master's command, because of that, this storm has come upon us. This tempest has come upon us. So, they were looking for who is running away from the master's command. So, Prophet Jonah, peace be upon him, he was there on the ship, and he realized that he is the one who is running away from the master's command, and he is a guilty man. So, he makes a manly comeback. A manly comeback he makes. And he said, I am the guilty man. God is after my blood. And if you throw me overboard, it will be all right for you. Otherwise, you all will sink along with me. He makes a manly comeback. 
So the people say, no, 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 this person might want to commit suicide. So then, no, no, we have our own method of knowing who is the guilty man, of like casting of lots, head and tail. And they cast out lots, and they came out with the answer that Jonah, please be upon him, was the guilty man. Now this man volunteered, Jonah, please be upon him, he volunteered, and when a man volunteers, you don't have to strangle him before throwing. When a man volunteers, you don't have to break his arm or limbs before throwing. Am I right? Because he's volunteering. So, they took him and they threw him overboard in the raging sea. I say when they threw him overboard, was Jonah dead or was he alive? Dead or alive? Alive. A fish comes and gobbles him up. From the fish's belly, he prayed to God. Do dead men pray? Do they pray? No. So he was alive. Louder, louder. The fish takes him round the ocean for three days and three nights. And on the third day, the fish vomits him on the seashore. Dead or alive? Alive. So he was alive, alive, alive. You know, when you throw a person in the raging sea, he ought to die, but he did not die. Is it a miracle? Is it a miracle? Yes. When a fish comes and gobbles him up, you know, the person is supposed to die, but he did not die. It's a miracle. From fish's belly, he prayed to God in suffocation and heat. He remained alive. It's a miracle. For three days and three nights, the fish takes him round the ocean. And on the third day, the fish vomits him on the seashore. And he was alive. It's a miracle of miracle of miracles. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Riaz Ansari from the United States, and you're watching Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Saturday to Thursday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It is easier to practice Islam with a better understanding. A systematic and simplified approach would eliminate confusion. So join me as I discuss the practical yet simple steps to understand Islam. Join Hatham Al Haddad in Principles of Understanding Islam next on Peace TV. Jonah, peace be upon him, was alive. I'm asking the Christians, how was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was in the tomb? How was he? And 1,500 million Christians, they say that he was dead. So I'm asking, is he like Jonah or is he unlike Jonah? You tell me. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So who is telling the truth? Jesus said, I'll be like Jonah, and you are telling me he's unlike Jonah. Who is telling the truth? Is Jesus telling the truth? Or 1,500 million or more, they are telling the truth. Who? We cannot believe the Prophet of Allah can lie. No, he can't. 
the Christians are just misunderstanding what is written in the Bible. Bible is just giving the Islamic perspective. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified, he did not die. And as Jesus foretold that I will be like Jonah, and you are saying that he is unlike Jonah. Jonah was alive in the whale's belly, and you said Jesus was dead in the tomb or in the sepulchre. He was dead, you are saying. So who is telling the truth? So they come up with the answer. They say, no, 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 no. Jesus was not emphasizing about dead or alive, but he was emphasizing about the time factor. You know time factor? He says four times, three days and three nights, three days and three nights. So he was emphasizing about the time factor. I said, okay, come on. Let's analyze the time factor. They said Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, and Jesus was also three days and three nights in the tomb. Jesus was not emphasizing about dead or alive, but he was emphasizing about the time factor. I say, is time factor a miracle? The Jews were asking him to show us a miracle. Is time factor a miracle? Suppose it takes me around three days to reach America. Is it a miracle? Is it a miracle to reach America in three days and three nights? No. What is a miracle? A miracle is, suppose you put six bullets through a person and he dies. Is it a miracle? No. But if you put six bullets through a person and if he does not die, that is a miracle. The Jews were seeking after a miracle, not about the time factor. But let's see, okay. Let's analyze the time factor. I said, when was he put on the cross? They say, Friday afternoon. How many hours he was there on the cross? Some say six hours, some say three hours. Okay, whatever you say. And the Jews were in a hurry to take him down. You know why? Because on the Sabbath day, they cannot crucify a person. Because from Friday evening, the Saturday starts. Saturday is the Sabbath. So they cannot crucify a person. They cannot uh, put a person on the cross on the day of the Sabbath. So they were in a hurry to put him down. So within three hours, Jesus was brought down. That's why Pontius Pilate, he wondered, he marveled, that how can a person die in such a short span of three hours? Because the other two thieves who were also crucified along with Jesus, they were alive. So Pontius Pilate, he marveled, that how can he die in such a short span? So Friday evening, he was put in the tomb. So now look at my fingers. Friday night, he was in the tomb. Saturday day, he was in the tomb. Saturday night, he was in the tomb. Sunday morning, when Mary Magdalene came, he was not dead. He was not dead in the tomb. So how many days and how many nights? How many days? One day and two nights. Even Einstein can help you now. You know, one day and two nights. Three days and three nights, one day and two nights. So even the time factor could not match. So they come up with a new philosophy these Christians, the people who print the Plain Truth magazine, the Plain Truth magazine, Armstrong family, they come up with this philosophy. They say it was not Good Friday when Jesus was put on the cross. It's a very small section of group, Jehovah's Witnesses. They say it was not Good Friday. It was Good Wednesday when Jesus Christ was put on the cross. It was Good Wednesday. So now the time factor is matching three days and three nights. You know, we Muslims, if the Christians shift the day from Good Friday to Good Wednesday, we Muslims should protest. You know why? Because on Good Friday, we have the maximum jama in Juma Salah. Yes or no? So we must protest that no, it should not be Good Wednesday, it should be Good Friday. So even a time factor does not match. So Jesus Christ is born him with this sign of Jonah. Wallahi, you can prove to the Christians that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified and he did not die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157 and 158, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die, he was not crucified, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him up unto himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted in my full of wisdom. So all these pre-crucifixion events, alleged crucifixion, and post-alleged crucifixion events, if you analyze their records, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will come to know that there is no proof that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died or he was crucified. All the things that I mentioned, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not prepared to die. He was preparing for fight. He asked the disciples to take up the sword and 
he was not willing to die. He prayed to Almighty God, said, Oh my Father, let this cup pass away from me and remove the difficulty from me, not as I will, but as your will. As a true Muslim, he submitted his will to God. So he was not prepared to die. Even at the time of trial, he retorted, he reacted, and he put forth a very potent defense in front of the Jews as well as in front of the Pontius Pilate. And after that, he was seen alive by Mary Magdalene, he was seen alive by other disciples, he was seen alive by all the disciples in the upper room. And he was proving to them that the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see may have, and I am the same Jesus what you are looking for. And through the sign of Jonah, you can prove to them that Jesus Christ is before him. He had foretold that he will be like Jonah, and that was the only miracle that he was prepared to show to the Jews, that for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I would like to conclude this talk of mine with the quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 54, the verse that I recited in the beginning of my talk. Allah says, Makaru wa makarallahu wallahu khairul makareen. That they plot and plan, but Allah too plan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah, brother Athar, for your talk on crucifixion and Islamic perspective. Now we would have the open question and answer session. We would request our audience, as usual, to kindly keep your questions on the topic. That is, only questions on crucifixion and Islamic perspective. It should be brief and to the point, and only one question at a time would be allowed. Volunteers may kindly note you should allow non-Muslim brothers or sisters first preference. They should be allowed to come in the front, even if there are other Muslim brothers and sisters in the queue. Muslim brothers would be given secondary preference, of course, brothers and sisters. Three mics have been provided, one in front next to the stage, one in the rear section for brothers, and one in the ladies section for the sisters. May we have the first question from the sisters' side. And we'll follow in a clockwise direction the second question here, the third year, and so on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khairan brother for that lecture. My question is, uh, could you throw some light on the book, The Da Vinci Code, some of the things mentioned in it about, about Jesus alayhi salam are blasphemous. So if you could just elaborate on the basic concepts in uh, the Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Thank you. Sisters posed a question regarding on Da Vinci Code. Uh, there was a movie which came recently of Tom Hanks, Da Vinci Code. And in that movie, many of the Christians, they also protested against the movie. Because in that movie, they were saying that Jesus Christ is on him. He married Mary Magdalene and he did have children, and that lineage is still continuing. So all these things are there. So what is my opinion regarding the Da Vinci Code? See, if any person blasphemes any messenger of God, whether it be Jesus Christ who is upon him, or Moses who is upon him, or any other messenger, the new Muslims should protest against him. Because Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ who is upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated as Christ. We believe that he gave life back to the dead by God's permission. We believe that he was born without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We Muslims and the Christians, we go together. So if any person blasphemes the messenger of God, we Muslims should protest. Before the Christian protest, we should protest. Because we love, we revere, and we respect this mighty messenger of God. But in Da Vinci Code, these things were there, but there were also many things which conciliated with the Islamic teachings, the Islamic perspective. For example, in Da Vinci Code, Jesus was not taken as God. He was not taken as God. He was considered as the messenger of God. So to things which are blasphemous, we Muslims should protest. And for the things which match with the Quran, which match with the Islamic perspective, we should promote such things. And Bible is enough for us 
don't uh, go for da vinci code some christians believe some do not believe but this holy bible which has got 66 books inside roman catholics believe in the 73 books but they also believe in these 66 books so this bible all the christians they believe they consider it to be the word of god so our proof our argument should be from this book not from da vinci code which many christians they believe many do not so if any person blasphemes or anything happens against the messenger of God, we Muslims should protest. If somebody blasphemes Jesus, peace be upon him, we Muslims should protest before the Christians. But if there are some things in the Vinci Code which also match with the Quran and with the Islamic teachings, that is Islamic perspective, so we must promote such things. Uh -huh.